I don't even want to get upset or comment about this. Bomba, bomba. Okay. Jesus, 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 I know what you're thinking, oh my god, another black girl is going to be crying about people not liking her hair or people touching her hair or maybe you're on the other side of the story and you're like, oh my god, another foreigner crying all over Japan and making a whole anti-Japan campaign, it's none of that, this video is none of those. What's up Yakuza's and thank you for tuning back in but if you're new here hi my name is Ila and I go by Crazy Ila. I live in Japan and overall my content is about my experience in the country of the rising sun so if you like the vibes around here you like my pretty little face you like everything you see around this channel don't hesitate to subscribe to my channel and check out my social media if you want to follow up on my daily life. In today's video you guessed it we're going to be talking about hair and perceptions of black people's hair in Japan but it's not going to be all about crying and complaining and things like that I'm just going to talk about my journey and why I'm making this actual video. I made this video because very recently actually not later than two days ago I removed my hair extension and it took me so much time to do it like all the day and I cancelled all the plan that I had and I realized that I just don't have either the time or the money to dedicate to my hair especially my hair extensions. So these two days I decided to just go out with my natural hair exactly as you're seeing me like this I'm coming from work and comments that I received online a little bit of a chat that I had with a friend online and also comments that I received that work all that reminded me of my hair experience in japan and different people reacting to my natural hair so i decided to put up this video together i filmed the video maybe like three months ago but i was hesitating Bruh. to film it i was hesitating to put it together as a video because i was like oh maybe it's going to offend some people Child. and then at some point i was like fuck it it's my experience if you don't like that type of video Jesus. i just decided to stop overthinking about my video topics because i know i'm not going to be for everybody anyways so if you've been around this channel for a long time you've seen one of my very first video I talked about how somebody reacted to my hair when I went to Kyushu southern Japan there's a lady that was following me and saying that my afro hair looked like her dog's hair I met this Japanese lady she was telling me that her dog had the same afro as me yesterday like seriously guy I don't even I don't I don't even want to I don't even want to get upset or comment about this like it's racist because I think Okay. It's a little bit insulting to be wearing an afro hair and someone just following you with a photo of a dog and telling you that they look like their dog's hair. But then I realized that in Japan there's also a thing that people th uh, think of their dogs like their kids. So there's a certain perception in Japan that is not definitely, not always linked to like discrimination or racism. But then about five to six months ago I was in Miyashita Park and I was wearing my afro extension, like big afro. And in Miyashita Park I received quite nasty kind of comments of people who didn't think that I spoke Japanese. I actually posted a photo on my Instagram that day when I, I was like feeling a certain way about people pointing me with the fingers and teenagers in Japan, I think teenagers all over the world are the most mean <laughs> actually and the one here were pointing fingers at me at Miyashita Park and saying comments, weird comments and laughing and looking back and laughing and talking to each other. I unfortunately I understand some of the Japanese words that they use and they were pretty rude so that was offensive. So you get this type of different comments in Japan that sometimes are innocent and some other times are just like people being mean to you because you look weird to them. So I know that in Japan I already have the look of so many people because I look different especially when I go to countryside. In Tokyo people just got used to like the difference because it's the most diverse area of Japan anyways. Even if in the overall country there's only 9% of foreigners I think most of them are concentrated in Kanto area. So I don't get that much of look in Kanto area per se unless I have different type of hair that is a little bit like I would say non 
non-straight uh, per se and also if it's like an afro with a certain volume or a certain color people tend to look at me more much more of course there are times where i overthink because sometimes when you know you look different you know people have been looking at you for a while you'll be constructing ideas in your mind and and thinking that everybody is looking at you for your hair or everybody's trying to mock you or people are just thinking you're very hand you're very bizarre but why would japanese people look at me when i'm wearing a certain type of hairstyle much more than when i have my con rolls or my box bread because you look different and we're not emphasize this enough this country was very close for many 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 years and now that it's opening a little bit more to foreigners and many foreigners are coming in the country and pretty soon it will be open to tourism again so it's getting there people are getting used to differences people are getting used to diversity but when it comes to our hair it looks very much different from theirs that's why it's difficult to handle our hair in hair saloon in japan it's difficult to find the products that actually fit your hair type i just order from i heard from usa and i'm telling you the shipping fees is just a scam Oops. it's just I want to cry almost oh my god <laughs> so yes people will look at you when you're wearing that type of hair in japan much more but not always to mock you sometimes it's curiosity sometimes it's actually appreciation because some of them come next to you and ask you question and they want to touch your hair like in this video right here <laughs> That lady just asked me before I start filming, she was like, oh my God, where are you coming from? I told her Congo and she said, I really, really love your hair. I said, thank you. And she was like, can I touch? And because she was old and we were in the hospital, I was like, yes, please. And she touched it and she was like, I've never seen anything like this in my life. So there are things like that where people come to you for appreciation and look at you because they think, oh my God, this is so, or something I see on TV, this is so nice. And also some of them can mock you because uh, you look ridiculous for them. And that's also linked to the fact that many people in some festivals in some funny things in Japan when they want to make people laugh they also wear an afro hair that might be pink that might be red or center color a certain size actually so when you are wearing an afro extension like the one I wore people might think you're doing some sort of comedy and they might mock you for that the fun part is I'm from Congo and still in many African countries Bruh. straight hair is the norm if I'm wearing my hair like this in my country Congo people will be asking me if I'm from a certain religion or from a certain sect we have so many sects in Congo uh, from Christianism that actually wear their hair natural because they have certain theories but anyways they will be asking me if i'm from branam which is a sort of sect within the christian religion some other people even within my family will be asking me why i'm wearing my hair like a widow or why i didn't straighten it or why my hair is not ready yet so whether it is in Japan or in my country, Congo, I will be looked at very much if I'm wearing that type of extension. But again, you will tell me, yes, you are wearing extension. That's not your natural hair. If you're asking yourself that question, I'm sure you've not been around many black people much. <laughs> So yes, there are many black women whose hair is looking like that, the volume, the length and everything. And actually they're wearing it with much more pride, especially in America. So now forgetting other people and reflecting on myself. Why when I'm wearing my natural hair or wearing hair extension that has the same texture as my natural hair, I think people will be looking at me much more. It might come from different experiences of life. In many other societies other than Japan, many black women or black men as well have been discriminated because because of their natural hair. Things have changed with all the nappy and natural hair movement, but before that, and still a little bit, in many companies, this doesn't look formal. So our natural hair in many society doesn't look beautiful enough to be formal. That's why people straighten their hair. And many people have seen their natural hair, dreadlocks, locks because many people don't want to say dreadlocks but that's another debate have been mocked because of wearing the natural hair so that's why over the time especially in america with the history of slavery we have been straightening we they black people we have been straightening our hair just to match up the standard of the society so all these different things of people mocking us until now giving us different names or you're wearing dog's hair or your hair looks like a pineapple like in very lit literal sense of mocking these have created many insecurities these insecurities have resulted in some defense mechanism of all of us saying don't touch my hair don't talk about my hair don't ask questions about my hair of course i'm not saying that everybody that say that is insecure but many of us have that defense mechanism system just because the society hasn't always been nice to our hair so straight hair is still the norm even though like decades ago i feel like there's much more movement of people going back to their natural hair but even within the natural hair people are used to see a certain texture and that is bringing us to another concept texturism but i don't want to go that deep because it's a whole other story and some people just don't agree with so this is just to say that even between black people hair also 
look different we use different type of products i just had a chat with one of my friends online today on instagram and we kept talking about how our porosities are different the product we're using are different and we feel like everything have to be uh, customized to our type of hair because out there in the society or in the market there's not enough product that understand the way our hair works that's why we usually go to like ancestral knowledge we want to see how ladies in chad were using the chebe powder or the way our grandma were taking care of our hair so we're still going back to our ancestral knowledge because there's not much product out there that understand our hair much i don't want this video to be pretty long and to be another old speech about hair and black people's hair discrimination and xenophobia but i just wanted to remind some people out there that beauty is actually just the way you see yourself it is very subjective beauty depends on the society like what is beautiful in congo is not necessarily beautiful in tanzania or necessarily beautiful in america it's very subjective concept and the most importantly is the way you see yourself because you can start a norm you can start to impose a norm maybe five years ago if i had the same hairstyle and i was sitting in front of the mirror i'll say oh my god i'm looking so ugly there's no way i'm going out like this but just the way i'm trying to change my conception and the way i look at my hair it just gives me more courage to go out there the way i look like without doing so much effort and killing myself or on buying extensions and spending so much money and time into making my hair look the way the society wants i I like i'm done with it and these days i just want to actually leave my hair the way it is and take care of it the way it is like not hiding under extension so that i can have an idea of its growth and how the, it's reacting to the products even if it's summer and it's actually the wrong time to do this and this is exactly why representation matters like i've been following maybe like for two weeks ago many people that have hair that looks like mine like they have accounts on instagram and they do different type of uh, hair care and different type of hairstyle that made me much more comfortable into wearing my hair a certain type of way so i think representation matters a lot i know in japan there's not many black people and the ones that are here are not necessarily wearing the natural hair but at least online i have i can find a community to conclude this video i have an advice for black girls black women and black men and non-black people so for black people it's okay to feel insecure about some part of your body what is not okay though is always assume that it is racism or it is xenophobia or someone just want to disrespect you there are many cases of course depending on your experience because i don't want to minimize everybody's experience but in japan especially it's not always xenophobia sometimes it's people just being curious about your hair it's people wanting to understand the difference to know so it's also a good place for you to uh, educate other people many people are against this educating thing like it's not my role to educate people but just be patient enough to understand that you look different in a society that is pretty uh, homogeneous at some point we have to come middle way instead of like tearing each other's apart advice to japanese people in japan and non-black people other people's insecurities and other people's past and other people's heavy uh, history is not exactly your responsibility in quote but just be considerate on the way you're looking at us the way you interact with us when it comes to our differences or avoid to touch because people might react differently depending on where they come from depending on their past so just avoid touching black people's hair there are songs about it there are blogs about it just don't come and touch people's hair especially without asking permission when we take care of our hair many of us have their leave-in conditioner they have their deep conditioning they have their coconut oil going around and you just come with your fingers and rub it inside it just makes us so uncomfortable because it takes us so much effort and so much consideration to take care of our land to see if we have retentions to know if we have protein attack or some protein deficiency so there's a lot of especially people who are completely natural there's a lot of care in our hair to present it to the society the way it looks like so just don't touch our hair okay so just just don't touch it the more we accept each other's difference the less friction will be in the society i know this is a little bit cliche and sound like some gandhi type of sentences but think about it okay so yeah this is pretty much it for the video i hope you enjoyed watching this and if you did if you give it so please if you did give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe click on the notification bell because i'm planning to upload much more video than only every sunday follow me on my social media if you want to know more about my life in japan and yes i'll see me the video is longer than expected <laughs>